Hello, I am Clay Johnson from Poly Sales, and I'm going to show you how to unpack and set up your Melgus 15 mast. So first we have the mast. The mast comes in two parts, and then I also have the side stays and four stay in a separate bag. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the mast. While I'm doing so, I'm going to be careful not to twist the mast um, because the halyards run internally and we don't want them to twist as we're putting the mast together. Spreaders are going to come in a separate bag and will be taped to the mast. So that's where you can find those when you're unpacking everything. First, I'm going to untie. It looks like it's just tied together with a spinnaker halyard. I'm going to unwrap this. Probably for safety, I'm going to put a stopper knot in this just so it doesn't um, go back into the mast itself. Now I'm ready to separate and then assemble the spars. This is the top part of the mast, this is the bottom part. Like I said, the halyards run inside. So the first thing I'm gonna do, again, without twisting, is I'm gonna kind of look in and I'm gonna make sure there's no obvious twist. Yeah, I can see these, they look pretty straight. So, I'm gonna take this, flip it, and then there's an internal sleeve on the bottom section of the mast. Make sure I don't pinch any of the ropes. And then slide it together. Clips together like this. You can leave it together for all year long. Um, probably recommend maybe at the end of the season taking it apart and rinsing it really well because if you're in a salty environment, this can get a little corrosion on it. I'm gonna make sure that all the halyards are run down to the bottom. So, this white and black and red line is the spinnaker halyard. I'm going to untie it from down here. And again, out of an abundance of caution, I'll tie a stopper knot just so I don't lose it through there. And I'm going to pull the spinnaker halyard down. There are two tails for the main and the jib. So, out of the bottom of the mast, there's a spectral line with a loop for the main, and then another spectral line with a loop for the jib. And what you do is you take this one black tail, and you're gonna tie one end to each. I believe in previous versions, um, Melga supplied two separate tails. That's no longer the case anymore. Now it's just one long tail. Ties to each. I'm going to tie a bowline onto this because I don't want to lose this into the mast as well. And this is going to stay tied all the time. Now I'm going to take my jib halyard and I'm going to run this all the way down. And then I'm going to come up here. this all the way down. Another difference is, I think in uh, early versions, Melgus put shackles on the top for the halyards, and now they use these stopper balls. So don't be surprised if you see stopper balls here. So everything's run down to the bottom of the mast. It's now time to put your stays on. In here is a four stay with two side stays. Twist these and straighten them out. do is you're going to come up to one of these. This is called a T-buckle. This is going to go into the side stay spot. So you're going to put it in. It can be a little tight. You just have to kind of wiggle it around. Put it in and turn it 90 degrees so that it is locked in. And you're going to take this stay, separate it from the other one, put it all the way down. And you're going to roll the mast and you're gonna do the same thing with the other stay. Lastly, we're gonna 
do the four stay. And take this, and you're gonna put it in. This one's actually a little bit tighter than the other ones, but that's okay. Turn it sideways, and then run it to the bottom of the next. All right, now, ready to put on spreaders. Two spreaders, one with a green ring, one with a red ring. Green's gonna go on starboard, red's gonna go on port. There's a bolt with a flathead and a lock nut on the other side, two of them. We're gonna take those off. Then I'm gonna take starboard, and I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna put the bolt in from top to bottom. I'm gonna put the nut on, kind of do this hand tight. This should be spun all the way in for now. I'm gonna put this down in here. Try and line this up as best as I can. From top to bottom. And I'm gonna put that one on too. Since I have both of these on now, now I'm gonna snug these up pretty tightly. Don't tighten one overly on one side and then try and put the other one in. It might make your job a little more difficult. So you're gonna repeat the, pro the same process for that on the other side. The end of your spreader has a small black cap with a Phillips head screw. Put the side stay of the shroud through this cap. So I'm going to take a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to put it in the front here and then I'm going to put everything back in its place. Wider hole and then in the front. And then I'm going to put this back in and I'm going to screw it down. Now, two common mistakes people make. The first is they think that they need to go through this opening with the spreader. That's incorrect. You want to go through one of these two. And then, well, you want to go through this one. Um, and then the second is uh, how tight do you make this? And the answer is you want to make it snug so that this black cap and this nut don't come off, but you don't want to over tighten it where the stay doesn't move. So you have to kind of find this happy medium where the stay can move, but it's not overly tight. And you're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Put both spreaders on. Now I wanna measure my spreader position. And what we wanna do is you take a straight edge, in this case I'm gonna take a two by four, and I'm gonna put it from spreader tip to spreader tip. And then I wanna measure this distance from the straight edge down to the mast. And I want that distance to be as close as possible to 135 millimeters. It's unlikely you're gonna get exactly there, that's a pretty specific number, but as close as you can get to it. I'm going to start with these turnbuckles all the way in. Pull out this quick pin. Pull out this quick pin. And now these can spin. So we're going to turn it, I think it's about 16 half turns. That's a good place to start. So now we're gonna take our straight edge and I have a ruler that's in millimeters. And now I'm gonna measure, and I'm at about 146 millimeters. So I'm gonna go a couple more turns out. Do it evenly on both sides. And we'll try again. Now I'm at about 138. So maybe I'll do one more. One. One. Let's try one more time. And yes, 135 millimeters. So that's the distance you want at that point. You can take this and put it back through this little hole. And this is gonna pin this in position so that it doesn't spin while you're sailing. Uh, this is a general all-around um, setting that you can use in all different conditions. And 
and uh, a good place to start. Mass is put together and ready to go. I'm going to put it into the boat next. The first thing you need to do is you need to loosen up the shroud adjusters as much as possible. So it comes with cotter pins. I'm going to pinch these together with a plier. And I'm going to pull them out. Probably I'm going to throw them away because you should use scar pins in their place. They're a lot easier for adjustments. Then I'm going to loosen this all the way to make it easier to step the mast. And I'm going to get it so there's maybe only one or two threads showing just to be safe. And then I'll do the other side. The other thing I'm going to do to prepare myself to step the mast is I'm going to put the boat breaker on the front. So this is called the boat breaker. It comes with your boat. You use the shackle and go in the frontmost hole. And this is going to clip onto the forestay, and we'll use this to pull it down and lock it in place. Now I'm going to step the mast. I put it together. I've loosened up these um, side stay adjusters as much as possible. I even took the pin and ring ding out in advance. I put my boat breaker on. I'm going to take the mast and I'm going to stand it up. And then I'm going to stand to the side of the boat and I'll lift it into the boat. I'm not going to go into the boat. You don't want to be on a boat inland, especially on the dock. So here I go. Step it in. Then you can have your assistant. Mark Hubby over there. Put the pin and ring ding in on that side while I hold the mast. Laura's going to come over here and do this one. I also want to remind you that when I was rigging this, I pulled all the halyards down. The main halyard, the jib halyard, the spinnaker halyard, just to make sure it was all down. You don't want to set the mast and realize that a halyard is still up in the bottom. Great. And then Laura's going to take the forestay go to the front and attach the boat breaker. I'm just going to take the slack out of it with the yellow line. Let's go. All right, so now your mast is up. You're not going to be able to pull the forestay in without the help of the boat breaker. So we're going to use the boat breaker and we're just going to pull it. It's not uncommon to hear a little creaking out of the boat. That's okay. Pull it tight enough so that I can do that. And I put the pin and the ring ding in. There, and then at this point I can uncleat this, slack out, and pull this off, and I'm all done. So these are scar pins. There are Velcro with a little pin on it. Um, I took out these cotter pins from the side stay adjusters. They're just too hard to put in and out, and they rip the spinnaker. These go in nice and smoothly like this, and then you can wrap it around the stay so that it holds the stay and prevents it from spinning while you're sailing. So I would take four of them and put them on each of the sides, and uh, it's, a, it's a lot better than those cotter pins.